Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity, Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Panwo TV. And this is part two of our Panwo TV film all about free energy. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to be able to get too close to the rubber for that laboratory because um, the train doesn't lead to a five to four. I'm not, wait well, I'm not waiting around that long in Didcot. Didcot's a shithole and, um, well, five minutes there is too long. So my, my dedication to you, my Panwo TV viewers, is that not, not that strong. Um, Come and pass the laboratory in a minute, we'll get a shot out of it through the window. Um, the Rutherford, Rutherford Appleton Laboratory is one of the world's centres for nuclear fusion research. Now, I mentioned nuclear power in part one of this film, but when, when I talk about nuclear power, when, when you usually use the word nuclear power, it refers to nuclear fission power. And this is where um, power is generated by um, splitting the atoms of heavy metals, like uh, uranium, basically and a, a controlled nuclear explosion, in other words, a very, very controlled nuclear reaction, um, so they explode slowly over a period of months rather than immediately in the form of a bomb. Um, now, that produces a lot of radiation, a lot of poisonous waste. What the, what the government, the corporations and the energy companies are currently researching in is nuclear fusion power, which is very different. Nuclear fusion power generates much more heat and much more power by uh, fusing the atoms of hydrogen together. And unlike nuclear fission power, it's reasonably safe. And it doesn't produce any harmful waste. And uh, what, the way it's done is by heating the gas in a device called a tokamak, which is a, which is a ring-shaped um, chamber sealed up and full of magnets. And um, I believe we're going past, I think we're getting close to the laboratory now. I just pick, put the camera up so you can see out the window. Um, a tokamak is a um, it heats the gas up to an enormous temperature at 20 million degrees, and um, so that hydrogen nuclei fuse, generating a lot of energy. Um, and the problem with this is, it's uh, the temperature at which the hydrogen fuses, 20 million degrees, is so hot that um, it's impossible to use any kind of heat exchanger because um, that hot gas will just burn up to a crisp it will vaporise anything it touches and that unfortunately is, is the stumbling block that is the, um, the big, big issue with nuclear fusion but despite this um, the Illuminati controlled governments and corporations and energy companies are investing vast amounts of money into this project. They're investing 10 billion US dollars um, to, into a new centre that's being built in France, which will be very, very much like the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory that we're about to go past in a minute. Um, 10 billion dollars for another one of these, <clears throat> when really the project has now been going on for decades and has made very little progress. I think they've managed to generate one watt of electricity, something like that. Um, and um, and it's really, like I said, it's a bit of a technological cul-de-sac. Just like the wave and wind power I was discussing earlier. Wave and wind energy, again, is not practical, as I explained earlier, for solving the mass energy concerns of civilization. Nuclear fusion power, as I said, is impractical because it just doesn't work. So do you see a pattern emerging? <clears throat> The Illuminati controlled governments, corporations and energy authorities <coughs> are investing all their money into projects that will not work. <coughs> Technological dead ends, impracticalities, frivolities. Why? Why are they investing all their money into these, um, these things which are pointless, and these pointless avenues of research, when as I've explained, oh, I think we're getting close now, I'll just put the camera out the window again, when as I've explained before, there is technology, technology that exists, very simple technology that has been developed, which could do the job of, of uh, solving the energy concerns of civilization. And there can be only one reason I can think of, they don't want us to have free energy. And why, why is that, eh? Why don't they want us to have free energy? Are they just spoil sports? What, what, what have they got to lose by giving us free energy? You can see here, this is these, I think these are storage depots for the service companies that 
that serve the depot, serve the um, laboratory. If you actually get close to the laboratory, you'll find there's massive security gates there and the security guards which are armed. I actually went round there thinking I'm just a few months ago just spying out the area to see if I could film there and um, there's no way you could get near that gate. Um, well just think about it for a minute. Um, fossil fuels for instance is very lucrative, it's very powerful. Um, the oil companies are some of the richest organisations on earth. You know, what are we going to do? Go up to them and say, Sorry, Mr. Chairman of Royal Dutch Shell, but your services are no longer required. I mean, come off it. It's not really very realistic, is it? What's he going to say? Oh, all right, then I'll go and set up a shoe shop somewhere. No, he's not. He's going to say, Bugger off. You're using my energy or else. You know, this. But there is another more fundamental reason. And that comes down to the problem of um, politics. That's what it's really about, politics. <clears throat> it's very important politically. Here we go. For us to use free energy. Because imagine we had imagine you we had all the energy we needed, we could generate in our own homes, we could do what the hell we like with it. We're at Oxford Station. Just imagine we could do that. <clears throat> it would basically mean that we would be free, free to, to go where we wanted. We could have a car, we could drive as far as we wanted, wherever we wanted it. We could go and live wherever we wanted. We could go and live in Antarctica if we wanted. We could just take one of these free energy devices along to our house. Now, who's going to want us to do that? Can you just imagine it? I hope you can hear me. Sorry, we got to watch it a bit quicker than I thought we were going to. We would, we would be in an energy utopia, which they've often talked about. No, I'm over here. Which they've often, they've often talked about. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to get my bearings at the moment because we got that. Um, we got to our destination a bit quicker than we thought we needed to. Yes, um, that's it. Um, <clears throat> We would basically be no longer, they could no longer control us, they could no longer control our movements, they could no longer control our activities. We could take one of these free energy and we could go wherever we wanted. We, we could fly from here to Brazil and go, go into the Amazon jungle and set up a house there. The plane wouldn't cost any money. The plane would, would, would be free. The, 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 the car that took, our, took us into the jungle would be free. We could set up a house for free. Be free everywhere. They would never have it, they would never permit, permit it. So that is why they suppress free energy. That's why free energy inventors have been jailed or dead. You should just try, try inventing a free energy device and see what happens. You'll get a knock on your door for some guys in black suits. They will say to you, do you want, do you want to sign up, our, do you want to sign up our, your uh, invention? We'll buy the patent off you, we'll buy the rights off you. They'll offer you massive amounts of money. If you say no, then they will threaten you. They'll, they'll, they'll get you into a compromising position and, with a prostitute or something and film it and then blackmail you. If that doesn't work, well, be very careful when you're crossing the road, basically. That's the problem. That's the problem we have to overcome. The fact that there are political and economic reasons that are fundamental to our society why energy is being, with, is being so tightly and utterly dictated to us. Energy production, energy use. Oil, gas, fossil fuels, coal, money we have to which we have to pay for with our money, is the oil which greases the Illuminati-occupied civilization we're imprisoned in. And one day we're going to be free of it. And there are ways that we can be free of it, both politically, political ways, and also practical scientific ways. Because as I say, this stuff has been invented, it's been developed. And we'll go into that in part three. Thank you for watching. Hospital Port's pride and dignity. Stop the new world order.